I says, Paul gives a knockout to all this. Paul, the 13th self-appointed apostle of Jesus. He appointed himself. In the book of Hebrews, he wrote. He wrote the book of Hebrews. Chapter 7, verses 1 and 3. It says, For this Melchizedek, Malik, Sadek, Saleh, Melchizedek, that's how it's King of Salam, Salam, King of Salam, peace, King of Salam, priest of the Most High God, Melchizedek, without father. He says, without father, without mother, greater than Jesus. Jesus had a mother. See? He says, without father. All right? So Jesus had no father. This man also got no father. Without mother. Jesus had a mother. So he's superior to Jesus. No, your, your own logic, your own reasoning. We're not producing anything from the Quran, producing from your own book, that this man Melchizedek is greater than Jesus according to your standards, your false standards. He's greater. Without father, without mother. Without descent. Jesus had a descent. To such an extent, they give him 66 fathers and grandfathers in two gene genealogies. Descent. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David, and Abraham begat Isaac and I. Two genealogies they give him. Descent. How he came down. From where? 66 fathers and grandfathers they give him. A man who had no father. They give him 66 fathers and grandfathers. In the book. This man, Melchizedek, no descent, no genealogy. Having neither the beginning of days nor the end of life. No beginning of days, no end of life. Jesus, Adam had a beginning and he had an end. Isa alayhi salam, he had a beginning in the stable and he had, according to the Christians, an apparent end. He died on the cross. He gave up the ghost. That's what he says. Is it true? He said yes. It's all right, he had an end. All right, he came back for a second inning. That's different. But the first inning, he was knocked out. This man, Melchizedek, no beginning, no end. I'm asking, please, man, who is greater, Jesus or Melchizedek? Put Adam on one side. Leave poor Adam on one side. He had enough trouble. <laughs> oh, his miracles make him God. I said, look, man, this poor man is telling you He's telling you, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, he says, all power is given unto me, is given to me, is not mine. Chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, he said, I cast out devils by the Spirit of God. It's God's help I'm doing this, casting out devils. Then the kingdom of God is come unto you. John chapter 5, verse 30, he says, I can of my own self do nothing. Nothing I can do of myself. God can do everything of himself. He doesn't need anybody. He says, I can do nothing of myself. He said, as I hear, I judge. Whatever God tells me to do, to say, I say. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Where does he say it is his own power he is doing things? Luke chapter 11 verse 20 he said, I with the finger of God cast out devils means with Allah's help I'm casting out devils where does he say he is doing the works nowhere the greatest miracle that Jesus performed was according to the scriptures giving life back to the dead one of his disciples called Lazarus he had died and Jesus wasn't there to help him out in his sakaratul mouth Dead pangs, he wasn't there. And when Jesus reaches there, four days late, the man is dead and buried. Not buried, put in a sepulchre, in a room, big room in his chamber. Sepulchre, not grave. So Jesus comes, and Martha, the sister of Lazarus, she's crying, wailing. John chapter 11, verse 40. This is when, uh, starting from 33. So when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, Martha, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit. He groaned. You know what's groaning? You cry out to God. You know, you speak, you speak in words, but those words are not audible enough for the 
neighbor to hear says, this guy is groaning, he's not groaning, he's talking to Allah. Say, oh, my father, oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Whatever you're talking. So he's, he says, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. 34. And said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. 35, verse 35. Jesus wept. You can remember this. The shortest sentence in the Bible. In the whole Bible encyclopedia, the shortest sentence somebody asks you, you can win a prize one day. Shortest sentence in the Bible is Jesus wept. Two words. Shortest sentence. Remember that. You'll win a prize one day. Verse 36. Then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. Verse 37. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself. Groaning. What's groaning? He's praying to God. He's offering up a silent prayer. So, oh my Lord, my friend is gone. You know, bring him back to life. But now the words are not audible to the people. They say, I don't know what he's doing. We don't know what he's talking about. He's groaning. They say he's groaning. He's not groaning. Come up to the grave. It was a cave. Cave, not a hollow. And a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. He must be stinking. For he had been dead four days. Jesus says unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, if you have iman, if you have faith, thou should see the glory of God. Not my glory, Allah's glory. If you have faith, iman, you can still see Allah's glory, Allah's power, what he can do. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes towards heaven. And said, Father, now he's talking loudly. All the while he was groaning, means he was silent prayer, communing with God. Now he wants the people to hear. He says, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. What? That groaning. He was offering a prayer. I said, now I know. I thank you. You heard my prayer. Means now he gets the assurance. Allah tells him, go ahead, ask what you want. I'll give it to you. It's a matter between the beloved and the master. He says, God says, like, ask what you want. You get it. He says, thou hast heard me. And I know. And I know, he says. And I knew, verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Means whatever I'm asking, you're giving me. Healing the blind, the lepers, quickening the dead. Whatever I'm asking, you always, you hear me. Doesn't mean that he's deaf at any time. No, means you're answering my prayers every time. Whatever I ask, you give me. I know that you hear me always. But because of the people that stood by, these people, superstitious, credulous people, they might think, I did it. I'm a God, giving life to the dead. For that I'm putting up a performance. Oh, my father, I know that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always. But because of these people, these superstitious lot, credulous people, they might think I did it. I want them to know I'm not doing it. It's you who's doing the works. That they may believe that thou hast sent me. That they may believe that thou hast sent, that you sent me, that I'm sent by you. I'm a true messenger of God. That's all. That's why I'm putting up an act. All the while the groaning, he is doing silent prayer. When he gets the assurance, he says, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. Why? Because God had assured him, go ahead and ask what you want, you get it. He gave him a blank check. It's not his, it was given to him. He called, he used it and he got it. And Peter, the greatest of the disciples of Jesus, according to Jesus, he said, I give you the, the keys of heaven. He says, on this rock, Kephas, on this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. This Peter, he testifies in the book of Acts, in the Bible. Chapter 2, verse 22. He said, ye men of Israel, O Jews, hear these words. Listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, a man approved of God among you. A man, not a God. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him. Which God did by him. He was only using him to press the button to put on the switch. The power was not his. It came from the power station. 
which God did by him in the midst of you, which you yourself also know. Where did he say Jesus gave life to the dead? Where did he give life to the dead? Did he say he gave life to the dead? No. He says, given to me. The all power is given unto me.